two years since they've been hiding in their bunker, so to speak. And now they've emerged from their slumber. I'm talking about the elites, the multinationalists, the billionaires, whatever you want to call them. They're back at it again. Plotting and scheming for the benefit of themselves and nobody else. Welcome everybody to the Storm is Here podcast. And tonight uh, we're going to talk about the Bilderberg meetings that, uh, in general, actually, I mean, the, the, the current meetings, the current meetings have already uh, taken place uh, from June 2nd to the 5th in Washington, Washington DC, but we're going to get into a little bit of the history about it and uh, read uh, an article about this whole Bilderberg agenda. All right, so let me start off with, uh, from the official website, apparently, they're claiming to be, and this is called BilderbergMeetings.org. So as soon as you, uh, as soon as you click onto this or you type in the, uh, the address, it'll bring, it brings you to the about or the homepage. So let me read this here for you guys uh, about Bilderberg Meetings. Since its inaugural meeting in 1954, the annual Bilderberg Meeting has been a forum or informal discussions to foster dialogue between Europe and North America. Every year, approximately 130 political leaders and experts from industry, finance, labor, academia, and the media are invited to take part in the meeting. About two thirds of the participants come from Europe and the rest from North America, one third from politics and government and the rest from other fields. The meeting is a forum for informal discussions about major issues. The meetings are held under the Chatham House rule, which states that the participants are free to use the information received, but neither the identity nor the affiliation of the speaker nor of any other participant may be revealed. Thanks to the private nature of the meeting, the participants take part as individuals rather than in any official capacity and hence are not bound by the conventions of their office or by pre-agreed positions. So let me expand on that for a second here. They're not bound by the conventions of their office. So basically uh, any politicians that you vote in and are asked to go to these meetings, uh, we don't actually send them there. They don't ask for our permission. They just go there on their own free will uh, or they just go there um, because basically their donors tell them to. So again, I, I again I just want to prove, like I'm always or I, I, I always have been proving for the last 10, 15 years, that we don't live in a democratic society. And this is another example of it. Because if we did live in a true democracy, not one single politician would be able to go to these meetings without the approval of the citizens. So I just want to make that clear. Okay. Let me finish this article. Uh, as such, they can take time to listen, reflect, and gather insights. There's no detailed agenda. No resolutions are proposed. No votes are taken. And no policy uh, statements are issued. Again, this is coming from the official website, apparently. And uh, there's, some, I think there's some contradictions in that last sentence there. And the reason why is because in the next article, there are... Uh, propositions and agendas or maybe not there's not uh, solutions but there are agendas now again this is all highly secretive so we don't know for sure but again they don't get together just to enjoy you know lobster thermidor and, and caviar I mean I'm sure that they do but they're there for a reason and the reason is for the benefit of the billionaires and the elites all right so this is out uh, next article is out of uh, we are change small independent news media company they're, they're, they're more like Trump supporters. Uh, they're off to the right. Uh, they were once aligned with Alex Jones. I do respect some of their work, but others I just basically get turned off by it. And in this article here, they do mention communism as being a, th a real threat. And again, communism could be a, a threat, um, but, the, but not to mention capitalism uh, is really being disingenuine. Um, you're really misleading the, uh, you know, the readers. So it seems like they want to, um, they're, they're only interested in um, 
viewers that sit more on the right. I, again, they'll, they'll probably say that's not the you know that's not the truth. But for them to say that capitalism is not a problem, um, then I think they're really truly lying to themselves. Okay, because cap. I mean, communism throughout history has has failed miserably, uh, and quite frankly, ca capitalism is is far worse. So I wouldn't want either of them. I just want a truly democratic society. And that's something that people should really strive for, okay? Anyways, let me, I'm digressing here, but let me read the title of this article. And it's the 2022 Bilderberg Agenda, Disinformation, Deglobalization, and Disruption of the Global Financial System. I mean, if the system hasn't, the financial system hasn't been disrupted in the last two years, man. Um, geez, it's already a mess as it is. I guess they're there to plot a furthering um, bankruptcy of, of our financial system, I guess. I, I, I don't know. Okay, so uh, every year, the world's richest and most powerful business executives, bankers, media heads, academic thought leaders, and politicians gather behind closed doors and discuss how to shape the world while perpetrating a status quo that has been highly beneficial for a select few. We are talking, of course, about the annual and always super secretive Bilderberg, Bilderberg meeting. By the way, this meeting that's being, that, that's being held in Washington is the 68th meeting. Let me read on here. And again, it's it's been two years since the last one. So just to, just to mention that. So Pfizer CEO Alberta Burla, former Google CEO Eric Schmidt, Henry Kissinger, you know the Henry Kissinger that said that you know uh, the planet is filled with useless leaders, yeah that that uh, Henry Kissinger, and CIA Director William J Burns are among the 120 invitees this year from 21 countries, though not many Russians. Now again, the fact that there are, there are some Russians there is a is a total surprise. But anyways, let's continue on here. So Bilderberg prides itself for enforcing the Chatham. House rule, according to which participants are free to use all the precious information they wish, because those who attend these meetings are bound not to disclose the source of any sen uh, sensitive information or what exactly was said. That helps ensure Bilderberg's legendary secrecy and the reason for a myriad of conspiracy theories. But as Pep Escobar notes, this does not mean that the odd secret may not be revealed. Now, Pep Escobar has got a lot of experience when it comes to these meetings. He's a, I believe he's an independent journalist. Uh, when you guys get a chance, go on YouTube, look him up. He's done some really good work. Now, again, according to the official website of the Bilderberg meetings, there are no agenda. But this article and um, this these journalists here beg to differ. So here's a list of items um, that might have leaked. We're not too sure, but I'll read them out to you anyways. So geopolitical realignments, NATO challenges, China, Indo-Pacific realignment, Sino-US tech competitions, Russia, the continuity of government and the economy, disruption of the global financial system, disinformation, uh, energy security and uh, sustainability, post-pandemic health, fragmentation of democratic societies, trade and deglobalization in Ukraine, and again, fragmentation of uh, democratic societies. I mean, what, what you have now is, democ is not democracy. It's it just basically table scraps or crumbs, okay? It's not a truly democratic society whatsoever. And now they want to eliminate that altogether. So again, if, if you let, if you leave the world to these billionaires to control, to decide your, your future and your destiny, boy, are you going to be in a lot of trouble. All right, so let me continue on here. So as can be seen, the members, two thirds of the participants from Europe and the rest from North America will be discussing, plotting in brackets, question mark, ways to manage the emergency of a bipolar world, and he's probably mentioning uh, bipolar meaning politically. Also, the agenda appears to be a direction away from freedom as the group will discuss plans to combat disinformation or elites silencing their opponents. So 
we're already seeing this um, silencing of the opponents. There are a lot of uh, people that are very outspoken on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter. And basically, they're being uh, punished. They're being banned. Their accounts are being shut down. I mean, we've seen Alex Jones, and, and I'm no fan of Alex Jones, but they basically totally just cut that guy out completely from YouTube, from Facebook, Instagram, you name it. He, he is not on social media whatsoever. Do I agree with this? No, absolutely not. Even though I don't agree with his views, I still believe in the freedom of information, the freedom of speech. These are important fundamental rights. And if you start taking those away, man, you're not going to want to live in that society. And again, for the liberals who applauded the fact that Alex Jones or Alex Jones was taken off or, or Donald Trump was taken off social media, they should not be applauding because one day it's going to happen to them. And it is already. All right, let me continue on here. The lead topic through the weekend will be geopolitical realignments following Russian invasion of Ukraine. Second is NATO challenges and likely how European members will deter Russian aggression. And the third is China, as Beijing threatens to invade Taiwan. Ultimately, ultimately, uh, what is decided will never see the light of day, though it will emerge as official policy that helps serve the Bilderberg elite. And if history is in any indicator, it will only worsen the current global situation. So like I said, they form policy here. I, I, I Again, I'm not there. I, I can't witness it. I don't know what's said. But, I, you know, they're there for a reason. And so whatever they decide here, you will see through laws that are enacted by your politician or your so-called representative, okay? Now, it goes on to talk about Trotskyism and communism. And again, they're not fans of it. Neither am I. But again, they don't speak to the, you know, some of the other issues and uh, which is cap. I mean, look, there's there are hardly any communist societies out there. Maybe maybe Cuba is the closest. I mean, China is not even communism. Uh, and what what the real issue is the capitalist economic system. Okay, uh, the so-called free enterprise that is really killing humanity on all levels, and it's killing the environment. It's, I mean, it's doing so much damage. But again, you know this this website we are change. You know, these journalists are, are more to the right. So, of course, they're going to be avid capitalist supporters. So I'm not going to read that part about that because there's, really, there's, no, really, there's, no, there's no point of it, okay? I'll continue on with the article here. But it says, since the group of elites have been meeting uh, regularly for decades, we're sure that the events over the last few years have nothing to do with them. I'll read a little bit, uh, the last bit here. Still, as uh, Charlie Skeleton previously wrote, and again, this is the guy that talks against communism, the biggest ethical question faced by the summit is not whether to milk the madness of the world, uh, the madness of war for profit, bombing and rebuilding countries, missiles and debt. That's all fine. That's just how neoliberalism liberalism works. What's tougher to justify within a democratic framework is the practical process whereby conflicts are being debated being closed uh, behind closed doors by top policymakers in concert with billionaire industrialists and private sector profiteers. The Prime Minister of the Netherlands discussing global flashpoints and luxurious, luxurious privacy with the CEO of Royal Dutch Shell and the chairman of Goldman Sachs International. It's horrible optics. Okay, and this uh, article is actually coming from zerohedge.com, so... Zero Hedge is another uh, independent media uh, news site. <clears throat> so again, guys, there. I mean, again, there you have it. Uh, these are things that people should be aware of, and I think uh, the Bilderberg meeting is. Uh, it is one of those things that is uh, mired with conspiracy. It's 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 always associated with conspiracy theories. But again, you have to ask the logical questions. Why are a bunch of billionaires? and highly influential influential people and royalty and politicians why are they going to these uh to these uh, different parts of the world in secrecy to have meetings i mean again if we did live if we lived in a truly democratic society then uh the people would dictate the citizens of any sovereign nation would dictate and say no you cannot go there in secrecy if we if, first of all they would have to have permission to to go there and, and secondly 
these meetings should not be secret. But they are, because the system allows it. And again, I keep talking about our system, how it's basically decaying. It's rotten. And uh, we basically need to change it, because if we don't change it, then basically things are really going to get worse. And I mean, they're bad as it is now, but they're only going to get worse as you let these billionaires and elites take charge. So, all right, guys, I want to thank you again for listening. You can check us out on three platforms. First being uh, Anchor FM, which is owned by Spotify. That's our podcast platform. YouTube under The Storm Is Here and Rumble under The Storm Is Here. Come support us. Please share our videos, like our videos, subscribe to our videos. And until next time, guys, take care. <laughs>